Speaking of busy, America's Morning Headquarters has you covered all morning long, and Jen Carfagno has been busy getting ready with her team for the show coming up in half hour. Yeah, we're talking more about, of course, what's happening this weekend, and we wanted to take a look at how everything is all connected. We're going to take a deep dive into this multi-day severe threat unfolding across the central plains, and did you know that these storms are actually an important piece of the weather that we're seeing in the west and along the east coast? We are going to show you how it's all connected. That's coming up at 9 a.m. Steph, uh, I won't lie. We were, you know, had High School Musical in our head. We're, th you know, singing the song. We're all together. Like, we're yeah. all, right? I mean, that's sort of, everyone is going to sort of play a role in what's happening well, this weekend. Well, weather is connected all around the globe. Exactly. So it's like the butterfly effect. Something happens yep. over there, and then it's going to impact mm -hmm. us here. And, of course, our weather impacting everyone else around the world, too. Yes, yes. So more coming up this morning. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for choosing America's Morning Headquarters to get you ready for what's ahead. Weather Channel is here with you, and we've got you covered as the system uh, has connections from coast to coast. And right now, some storms have fired up outside of the zone that we're going to be watching later on today. And it's these guys that are significant in their own way. we got a couple of warnings out, severe thunderstorm warnings yes. in Kansas. Hail could be an early day problem. Bigger hail could be a later day problem. So we're going to cover it all for you today, starting with what's happening now. Yeah, and today's big deal will last into the weekend for out. several cities. And I'll uh, show you what we can expect. You know, strong winds a possibility, but big hail and that tornado threat here, that's a likelihood if we do get these storms to fire. So we want to dive into some areas. We've got a five on the Twercon, especially watching across western Kansas and give you more of a indication of what we could be seeing play out. If there's a five on the Twercon, it means that a few tornadoes appear likely. Tornadoes watches will likely be issued. When there's a watch, you know the conditions are ripe for the formation of storms that could bring tornadoes. A strong EF2 or greater tornadoes are possible. So make sure you monitor the forecast and be ready to get warnings. Know where you would go. Be ready to take quick action as well. It's not just a tornado threat. It's also a big hail threat. We're talking golf ball or even tennis ball size hail or greater. Western Kansas, the Texas Panhandle, just two of the areas that we're really focusing in on. Now, Oklahoma City, let's dive in here. We do have some threats of rain and storms this morning. We've been watching that as we get you through the afternoon and early evening hours here. We're kind of in a lull, right? But then we do bring in renewed chance of storms as we get into the overnight. This is 4 a.m. and we've got a chance of storms coming through. Now, not to say it's going to look exactly like this or that this is the exact timing but just to give you a sense of timing it's overnight hours so make sure there's some something to warn you that will wake you up so that you can get to safety let's go to western kansas we've got a five on the torcon across this area this is where a lot of the ingredients in the atmosphere are coming together there's going to be a lot of instability kind of bottled up and so when the thunderstorms or if the thunderstorms are able to break through and tap into that they could be quite explosive the timing of this does come in into the evening hours this is about seven, eight o'clock or so. We'll be watching again for that risk of thunderstorms, bringing all the threats, big hail, damaging winds and tornadoes. Alex. Well, the storm threat doesn't end it. Yes, when we talk about a system of weather impacting different regions, it might be difficult to connect the dots. How does one impact the other? But our current stormy pattern actually is a prime example of the domino effect. So we're going to disperse and show you how the weather from coast to coast is all, all connected. Right. We really are. And we're going to connect the dots here so you can see how everything plays a role together. I mean, it's the jet stream really is connecting it all. And it's all coming into the lower 48 from the West Coast, coming from the Pacific. Let's see that in an instant replay. So we're going to disperse. And show you how the weather from coast to coast is all right. We really and so we've got two disturbances in particular that are going to come in on the jet stream and help influence our weather through the central part of the country. But we start with how it impacts our weather here in the west. So first one coming in through the southwest. This is going to move up into the plains. Greg will get to that. Next one comes in as we get you later in the weekend and later in the week and then through the weekend. That's going to be the trigger for weekend severe weather. But before it gets there, it's actually causing weather in the west with rain and mountain snow. More snow coming back to the Sierra. We've got a winter weather advisory up there in the Cascades. The wind is really going to be strong. Wind advisories 
up here through Southern California and into New Mexico, where the wind is a factor, of course, of its own right, but also bringing the fire concern. And we've got a risk out there, a red flag warnings that goes through tomorrow. The wind, the dry conditions, this could help fuel fires and help them move fastly. Now, of course, this is connected with the storms that we're going to see in the middle of the country. Yeah, it is. And, you know, you brought up a couple things. One, the cold and stormy weather in the West. Oftentimes, when you think of severe weather in the middle Greece. part of the country... This is just not even fun. D.C. is going to hit 90 before Atlanta will, and many other locations yeah. in the south. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But that's a strong ridge. Strong ridge, It blocks yep. everything. Blocks it, it up. It blocks everything. This is why we have two, two big systems coming into the middle of the country. There's nothing to really move them mm -hmm. east. Everything's blocked. Block, block, block. How do we unclog it? Well, it might take a week or so. <laughs> it's going to take a kick from something. Yep. All right. Well, don't forget our question of the day. We are asking you, Watching out for that. we've got the hail tracker to show you where that could be. And again, this is going back here. That was at, starting at 830 Central Time. Uh, you know, watching right here, just south and west. Hail size mm -hmm. over an inch in size. Quarter size hail is, would wear you out for severe limits. So anything above that is going to be even, of course, more damaging. All right. So here's sort of the setup here for us as we get towards the mid part of the day. Jen, you talked about that warm front. There it is. There it is right there. And we continue to deal with those winds generally coming out of the south, southeast of the surface that's just helping to bring in more of that moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And so the background colors here show us where we've got the stronger low level winds. That's always an important feature when you have a really strong low level wind and then you see how that changes in the first you know, couple thousand feet up there above it. Uh, that can help determine if there's going to be any spin in the atmosphere that will allow the storm to rotate, but also the instability really yeah. building. Yeah, it really uh, builds here throughout the afternoon and into the evening. And then uh, the thing that we have to watch out for, we've been talking about this here the last couple of days, is what's happening as you work your way aloft. Do we have that cap, that lid in the atmosphere? Well, there is a warm layer aloft that is going to kind of delay the storm action. But if we can get those thunderstorms to pop through that, things could really get uh, hectic pretty quickly. They have a lot of juice to feed them mm -hmm. here if they can get through that. So watch that through the overnight hours. Again, the dry line still a feature and helping to lift as well. And this will continue as we get even maybe through the overnight hours. Yeah, and then unfortunately we have to deal with uh, more Again. of this activity progressing into Friday, mm -hmm. into Saturday, into Sunday. It just becomes very tiresome. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. I imagine the forecasters all across the middle of the country, the local ones, the ones at SPC are like, oh gosh, please. Yeah. Yeah. And this end. No well, rest this weekend. Mm -mm. Yeah, this weekend, exactly. So let's have a look at the broad brush view here. Showing